Okay, unboxing time. This is how it comes. So we've got rubber, the usual foam. Uh, comes with a nice lunch box of cables. So that's these two are your internet interconnect cables for interconnecting positive and negative to uh, stacked modules. And these cable, these uh, cables here, that's quite nice. They supply you some termination cables to go up to your inverter as well. So that's pretty cool. A nice length of cable there. And they also supply comms cables. So you've got these cables will go between between the two um, batteries. It's an RS-485 cable. And then you also have, um, this is type one. So it's a type one cable, RS-485 to type one. Uh, for, that's for inverters that are using type one for the BMS. <clears throat> and we have here Voltronic amp. So if any of you are using Voltronic, Ah, and here we have Victron CAN bus. Okay, so this is the cable we're going to use because I'm actually going to connect it to a Victron controller just to show you. So let's tip the box up. It's reasonably heavy, 45 or 50 kgs, something like that. So I just stand it up on its end, pop that out. There are a couple of handles on either side, so I can just wiggle the unit out. Okay, so it has a base. It has a base on it. Now I've already livened up the can, uh, already livened up the BMS previous to this. Um, so that's why the lights are on. The lights won't be on when you get it. The BMS will actually shut itself down I think it's in about a day. If you turn the breaker off, the BMS will just self-power down so it doesn't power itself completely flat. So, this is the box. Now, so it comes with, a, each, each battery module comes with its own base. Nice and solid base. So you can stack it. It just sits on the floor, then the next base is designed to fit around the top edge of the next battery. So let's pull this inside. Something else I also prepared earlier. If any of you have used Victron, you'll know what this is. This is a lead, <clears throat> but we'll look at that shortly. So there's your breaker, simple, on, off. You've got CAN bus, RS-485 buses, RS-232, um, that'll be for uh, programming, which you won't need to do. It's got dip switches for addressing, so you have one as the master, two as the two, three, four, five, six, seven as slaves, um, or six. There's a reset button, so if there's any fault or if the BMS turns itself off, there's a little reset button in there. You've just got to get something fine push that reset button. That reset button also turns the BMS on initially. So if you uh, if the BMS is off, you can go and reset it. Now, be aware that if, if the BMS turns itself off on low voltage, um, it, will, it will automatically turn off. So if the BMS turns the battery off because the voltage is too low, the BMS will shut down but it will liven itself back up as soon as charge, as soon as charge voltage comes back onto the terminal. So as soon as the voltage on the terminals lifts, starts lifting up from your charger the next day, um, this will turn back on and the battery will come back to life again. So that's quite handy. 
um, so you're not dead in the water basically. Um, it will just protect itself, turn off, no more discharge, but as soon as charge comes back in, it'll liven up and connect up and accept the charge and away you go again. So, um, let's, oh, the, the terminals, so you've got, like I said before, connection terminals, negative, positive, and then also down to the battery below it, if you're gonna stack them. Um, what we also have here, before I get too carried away, you can order this, it's called a wall mount unit. So you can actually mount this uh, against the wall somehow. Now I've actually not really had a, look at, a good look at this, but um, I'm going to assume that it fits on somehow. I'll figure it out once at some stage. Um, but that basically what that does is it allows you to mount the battery this way up and run the battery this way up. So the battery can be run standing up like this, and it can also be run lying down on its pedestal and it can also be run uh, in a rack so you can rack mount the unit there's your rack mount cleats so basically you've just got screws in the side there and then you screw it to your rack and now you can do that like that or you can do that at that level there so you can have it sticking out a bit, or up front, or if you need to, you can have it sticking way out. Um, so, these are a separate order, so you need to order these separately if you're going to rack mount it. And this is a separate order if you are going to wall mount it. Now, if you don't need those, if you just buy the battery unit itself, or you buy, say, three of them, you can just use what's built into the battery already to pedestal mount it, okay? So that just fits on the bottom there, like I said, and then it stacks one on top of the other pedestal mount. So let's have a look at how this connects to the Victron system. Put those covers back on. Something I prepared earlier. We have a beautiful little Servo GX with a touch screen. So I will pop that there. Pop the power into the Servo GX. And turn it on. That will liven the Servo GX up. Color screen will come live shortly. In the meantime, I'll put this back in the bag. And we're going to use the uh, Victron CAN bus. It even is labelled there. This is to the battery. E-Tower CAN bus, Victron CAN bus that cable is likely just a standard patch cable but it comes with the battery so you don't even need to buy a patch cable there so i'll pop that canvas into the battery so you can see here this is just a blank it's got no inverter attached to it so there's no loads there's no and there's no batteries this is just your blank screen okay so if we look at here, we've got no um, sensors or, sorry, we've got a sensor that's a temperature sensor, but that's disconnected. Um, there's no other devices attached. And so if we then uh, connect um, to BMS CAM on the GX device, I'll go back to pages so you can look at it. Connect it to BMS CAM on the GX. Where is it? That way around. Always get it the wrong way around the first time. And there it is. Okay, so we have the battery. It's currently 50% state of charge, which is indicated also here. Three out of six lights. Um, yeah, simple as that. And then if you just want to address the next battery, RS-485 to RS-485 through this little link cable, and you are away.
So, it's pretty easy. By the way, the battery will actually run standalone. Um, you have voltage tolerances of 47 volts absolute minimum and 55.5 is recommended charge voltage. It will allow 56 volts, but that's the absolute maximum before, of course, the BMS turns itself off. So um, you can run this with an inverter that doesn't have the comms, the CAN bus comms, or any comms at all. You can run it standalone. It's really handy. Um, right, that's it. That's us. Awesome. Right